Hello! In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how you can make this awesome 3D printed robotic arm that works with an Arduino and servo motors. Something very special about this arm is that we can control it through an interface that offers us several options. We can save positions and replay them continuously. Additionally, we can export the programmed positions and later import them. I hope you enjoy it, so let's get started. I started by designing the 3D model for this arm. Here you can see a simulation of how the robotic arm moves before bringing it to reality. In the video description, I'll include a link where you can download the pieces in step format if you want to make modifications to the design. In the description, there's also a link to download the STL files so you can print the pieces directly. Let's begin with the assembly of the arm. First, I took a DC jack socket with a screw and soldered some wires with connectors onto it. I'm going to insert this into the base as shown in the video and then secure it with its nut. For this project, we'll be using an Arduino Uno. I connected it to my laptop and uploaded the code I had previously written, which you can also find in the description. This code allows you to control several servo motors connected to an Arduino board through serial communication, sending commands that specifically say which servo to move and to what angle. We're going to attach the Arduino to the base cover using some small screws. We place it under the base like this. Then, I connected the wires from the jack socket to the 5V and GND pins of the Arduino and secured the base with two 12mm M3 screws. I'm going to connect some wires to an MG995 servo and then connect it to the Arduino like this. Next, I'll place the servo on the base and secure it with 12mm M3 screws and washers. I'll attach a servo to the base's axis, as shown in the video. I screw in this adapter that I previously cut to fit this way, but we can also use the circular adapter. I'm going to screw these plastic adapters onto the ends of this piece, which is the forearm. I insert it into the base and secure it with a screw. Next, we're going to use the MG90S servos, but the parts are also compatible with SG90 servos. I'm going to place a servo into this white piece, which is the arm, and thread the cable through the internal hole of the piece. To this other piece, I'm going to screw in this black adapter that I previously cut to have it this way. The adapters and screws come together with the servos in the same package. We thread the cable of a new servo through the arm and then screw the servo to the wrist. We're going to place an MG90S servo at the base of the claw. To one of the gears, we are going to screw an adapter to, then insert it into the servo. I'm going to insert an M3 self-locking nut into the lower part of the base and then we'll screw in the other gear, making sure it's not too tight. After that, we'll attach the gear to the servo. In the same way, we'll place nuts on the pieces to later screw them together. For the entire claw mechanism, I'm using 16mm M3 screws. You can follow the video to assemble it correctly. Now I'm going to attach the cover using two 12mm screws. As you can see, the claw mechanism works properly. We're going to place an adapter on the base of the claw and secure it with its respective screws. I'm going to thread the claw cable through the arm conduit this way. We'll insert the claw into the wrist and screw it in place. It's important to note that before assembly, all servos must be set to their neutral position, which is 90 degrees. I'm going to organize all the cables coming out of the arm. Insert an MG995 servo and secure it with 12mm M3 screws and washers. Next, we'll thread all the cables through the forearm conduit, using pliers to pull them out through the lower part as shown in the video. 
will connect the forearm to the arm, secure them and organize the cables that will run down to the base. These are some cables I prepared beforehand to make connecting the servos to the Arduino easier. You can see the pins for power, the pins for the digital ports and on the other end the pins where we'll connect each servo motor. For this project I'm following this diagram. You can also power the servo motors externally if you encounter any complications with this circuit. We'll continue connecting all the servos to the cables, which also serve as extensions. I'm going to thread the cables through the hole in the base axis. We'll organize the cables in the compartment, place the cover and secure it with a 12mm countersunk M3 screw. We'll connect the servo cables to the power and digital pins of the Arduino, ensuring the connections match the diagram. We insert the axis into the base and screw it in this way. The robotic arm is almost ready. I'm going to insert the five legs into the base for stability. To power the entire arm, I'm going to use this 5V 3A adapter. And as you can see, it has a DC jack connector. We connect the adapter to the robotic arm and to the power outlet. Immediately, we can see the arm move to its default position. In the description of this video, you'll find the link to download the application. In my case, I downloaded the Windows version, but it's also available for Linux. Then I extracted the file to my desktop, opened the folder and finally launched the application. I'm going to connect the Arduino to my laptop. This way, we can start using our robotic arm. The interface to control the arm was created using processing. In the description, I'll also include the code in case you want to make modifications or see how it works. This graphical interface lets you manually control the robotic arm using the sliders in the center. upper corner, you can select the port where the Arduino is connected. You can also access other functions like saving movements, replaying them and stopping them. Additionally, there's a small slider that allows us to control the speed when replaying movements continuously. On the right, there are more buttons that let us export saved positions and later import them by simply selecting the saved file. Finally, there's a reset button that erases all saved positions, allowing us to start fresh. And now it's time to unleash the full potential of our new robotic arm. I hope you found this video useful or interesting. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content I share on this channel. It really helps me reach more people. Let me know in the comments what you think of this robotic arm and if you have any suggestions, questions or contributions to the project. Until next time, let's keep pushing the boundaries of what we create. See you in the next video. Goodbye.